Hello, it's Pastor Omega here to share the word of God with you. This is the second episode in the Rock series, and we are still talking about stretching our faith in God. The Bible says that without faith, it is totally impossible to please God. So we want to, through the word, know how we can stretch our faith to receive from the Lord. Today I want us to look at the Word of God in the first book of Kings, chapter 17. A wonderful story, a great story that will help us to develop our faith. And we are reading from the verse 1 to the verse 16. It said, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Chirith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she said, And he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I love this story. One of my favorite stories in the Bible when it comes to the Old Testament. It's a story that is fully loaded. Fully loaded. I'm not going to bother us with what happened in the preceding chapter and why Elijah was, was, was asked to leave Samaria and then go and hide in the brook because he had prayed and asked the heavens to shut down rain from falling. Why? Because of what the king Ahab, the evil things he was doing at the time. 
what I want us to look at is the encounter between Elijah and this widow. Now we look, when we look at the verse, from the verse 2, it says the Lord sent Elijah to go and hide in a brook, for he was going to send the ravens, ravens to come and feed him day and night. So Elijah did as the Lord had asked him to do. He went, hid, and the ravens were feeding him as the scripture said. Now it got to a time that the, the water in the brook had dried up because there was no rain falling. And so Elijah was going to need water to survive. I believe that if God wanted water to flow just in the brook, it would, because he's God. He can supply Elijah water in the brook, although the heavens was shut from, from releasing rain. I also believe that it was for a reason that God caused this brook to dry up and ask Elijah to leave and go to a place that he was going to command him to go. So in the verse 5, we see the word of God saying that, So he went and did according to unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. In the verse Eight, he said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now, I believe that God purposely, intentionally caused the brook to dry up. Yes, it wasn't raining, but God could have caused the brook to supply Elijah with water. But I believe that because God wanted somebody to be blessed, because God wanted somebody to, to experience a, spirit, a supernatural overflow, that is why he caused the brook to be dried up. So he sends Elijah now to go into a place called Zarephath to meet a certain widow. Now remember, Remember, there were so many widows, I'm sure, in that town. There were so many women in that town. But he sends Elijah to meet a particular widow. A particular woman. Mm. And the word of God says that he had commanded this woman to meet Elijah's needs. He had commanded this woman to meet Elijah's needs. Wow. Let's continue to read. And it said, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow, woman was there gathering of sticks and he called to her and said fetch me i pray thee a little water in a vessel that i may drink now elijah being a prophet of god sent from god and by god follows the instruction that god had given him to go because he god had commanded a woman to meet his needs, Elijah gets up, follows that instruction, gets to the gate of the city, and the Bible says he saw the widow. Oh. He saw the widow. Now, what I want you to learn from this little thing I've just said, this little word I've just said is, you see, when you follow the instructions of God, 
when you when you obey the word of God, the word of God will direct your path. The Bible says, "It says you he, he he will direct your path." Now, what does it say in Proverbs three? It says that trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall do what direct your path. If you follow the voice of God, if you follow the word of God, you will know it when you see it. When you, when you see what God is saying, you will know this is what God is saying. The Bible says, and Elijah saw the widow. I'm sure this way he would have, he would have met a lot of women. But in, in, within him, he knew they were not the widow that God commanded him to go and meet. Anyway, let's continue. And he said he asked her to fetch him water to drink. Now remember at the time, water was very, 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 in fact, it was short in the land. So water was very ex expensive. It was costly. But he asked this woman to go fetch him water. The woman didn't say a word. She said, go and I'll bring you the water. So the Bible says that, And as she was going, just as Elijah asked for the water, she was going to bring the water. The Bible says, as she was going, Elijah now called her to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Now remember when there's drought. I don't know if you've ever experienced drought wherever you are. But we know that when you are in a farming community, you are in a place where crops are grown and livelihoods are re usually, you know, um, dependent on such production. And there is no rain, there is no irrigation. You know that it becomes very difficult for the crops to develop. And so it becomes more like a cycle. If there is no rain and there is drought, it means that the crops will be deficient and they won't grow. So it means that harvesting and having enough to feed will be difficult. So it is no rain, drought, famine. All right, that's how it goes. So he asked for water first, which was very costly at the time. She was going to bring the water and he, he now then asked for food. And this time she spoke. <laughs> she spoke because Elijah had, had asked for something more, more, more expensive, more costly. He said, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I might go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. That was all she had. All she had was a handful of flour and oil. That was what was left in her kitchen. And she was going to prepare cake for herself and her son to eat and they would die because there was no more food. Drought, famine, no more food. So she was going to die after they've eaten this food. Why will God send his, his servant, why will God send his prophet to go to a woman who has nothing to offer? Why will God, God send his servant, to go to a poor woman. <laughs> Why would God ask Elijah to go to leave a dry place and even go to a more drier ground? And God specifically said that I have commanded this woman. So you would, you'd, you'd have thought that 
if God had indeed spoken to the woman like he spoke to Elijah, by the time Elijah got to the woman, this woman would have already prepared the meal for Elijah because then he knew that Elijah was coming. Oh my word. But this woman, obviously, as we read, had not really heard anything from God. He had not, she had not heard anything from God that the, a man of God was coming to you. So when he comes, please try and prepare food for him. In fact, um, meet him, serve him, um, supply all he needs as long as he lives with you. But the Lord said he had prepared a woman. How did God prepare this woman? This is what I believe. God had prepared the heart of this woman. Hmm. God had prepared the heart of this woman to meet the needs of Elijah. How do I know? I know it because when he asked for the water, he didn't say anything. Her heart was a given heart. She was ready to give all she had. She was ready to give the water. She was, she was ready. She didn't say anything. She was going to bring the water. How do I know that the heart of this woman was ready? I know this because in the verse 13, he said, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a cake, little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail unto the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And in the verse 15, he said, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Her heart was ready. God had prepared her heart. Now remember I said that God, I believe that God commanded the brook to dry up and sent Elijah to this woman because God had a blessing in mind. God wanted to bless somebody. Now look, look, look at this point I put down. Listen to them creep. I said, every substance in your hand right now, whatever you have right now in your hand, you can either choose to see it as a seed or as a fruit. It all depends on you. If you see it as a seed, you sow it. If you see it as a fruit, you eat it, and that will be the end of the life of that substance. So it is up to you whether to sow it as a seed or eat it as a fruit. Again, God will always give you the seed before he asks you to sow. He says he gives seed to the sower. God, remember, will never let you do something when he has not provided for that thing. God will always give you the seed before he asks you to sow. Three, God always has a blessing in mind for you before he asks you to sow. You see, in the kingdom, in the kingdom, it is sowing and reaping. Not the other way around. It's not reaping and sowing. No. It is sowing and reaping. It is a law. It is a law. And that law was put in effect from the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. After the Bible says he created the herbs, he created the trees, everything, he said, now he calls them to reproduce after their kind. So, when he created the first tree, the first tree will now bear fruit. The fruits will come down, all right? And then the fruits will 
will get rotten, will get into the ground, it will germinate and more trees will grow out of that seed. Do you understand? So it is seed, then you reap. It is not reaping before you sow. That is wrong. It is you sow and you reap. And always know that the reaping, the harvest, is always greater than the sowing. Your harvest is always greater than what you sow. Now listen to the fourth one. It is important, very, very important, that as a child of God, you follow the word of God. You see, because it is the word, the word, the word, the word is the ground in which you sow. I don't know if you got it right. You don't, you don't just sow anyhow. But you must sow according to the word of God. Remember, in the verse, let me read the verse 15 again. It said, and she, the widow, went and did according to the saying of Elijah. What did Elijah say? Elijah said, in the verse, um, verse 13, he said, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go, and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee, and for thy son, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sended rain upon the earth. You see, Elijah spoke for the word. The word is fertile all the time. The word is relevant, just as it was in the beginning, as God spoke. It is as relevant as it is right now. The word is the ground that you sow in. What is God saying to us right now? What is God speaking to you right now? I am speaking the word of God to you. Now, you need to stretch your faith to believe in that word and sow upon that ground, which is the word. That is the ground. So into that ground. The Bible says the woman went and did as Elijah had spoken. Key. Very important. The ground is the word. So in this ground. And if you sow in the ground, I tell you, my brother, my sister, the harvests, Definitely will be plenty. Don't believe any other word but the word of God. Don't listen to any other voice but the voice of God. So on the ground, the word of God. Now let me give you this testimony. There's a woman I know who I fellowship with, who is a born giver. Uh, for, 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 for reasons of, of um, not security reasons, I wouldn't want to disclose her name. But she's a, she's a chronic giver, if that's the right word to use. And I, 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 I used to wonder, I would always wonder, how come this woman is always sowing? I mean, You'll be in church and when they ask for any kind of seed, this woman will get up. And I, I will, most of the time I'll just sit and like, God, how does this woman do this thing? I want to emulate this woman. I want to learn from her. I want to, I want to, I want to give without thinking, God. I want to do it. How do I do it? And you know what the Holy Spirit told me? He says, you know what? This woman gives not because of who is saying what, 
but she gives the moment she hears the word she sows into the word he said the moment she hears that God said you should that is her ground so you could be a fake pastor you could be lying you may have not heard from God but so long as you said or you quoted the word of God that was her ground and the Lord said to me that as long as this woman has this thing in mind I have never spoken to her I have, I have never as I'm telling you I've never asked her why she gives, how she does it, never. This is the Holy Spirit who is ministering to me. And if she's listening to me right now, I tell you, she will herself tell you that this is exactly what it is. I've never asked her, but this is what the Holy Spirit ministered to me. When she hears it, that this is for the work of God, this is God saying it. The, 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 immediately she hears the word God she moves is that how we are meant to sow we, we end up by always saying that oh, no these people are always they want our money oh it's because of our money really no you see the moment you take that posture, you take that posture, you are cutting off the supply. Because it is sowing and reaping. And that's what God says. That's as the heavens and the earth remain. Seed time first. And harvest shall never see. Seed first and harvest. Seed first and harvest. It is never the other way around. Are you seeking blessing from the Lord? Yes, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. But that you have to as well sow into the things of God, in the grounds of God to reap. That is the word. This is the word of God. That is the word. That's what God sent me to give you. Stretch your faith. Yes, you may not have it. You think you don't have it. But let me tell you, if God is speaking to you right now, he's speaking to you because he has a blessing in mind for you. Has a blessing in mind for you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless you, O oh God, for your word unto us this day. Father, I pray, O Lord Almighty, that your people will begin to understand and catch this revelation. Lord, I ask, O God, that you cause their heart to receive and believe and be able to do. I thank you because I know that they are blessed. In Jesus' name I pray, thanksgiving. Amen. Hey. We thank the Lord for another word, powerful word that he's brought us. Yeah, but let me tell you, if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all these things will mean nothing to you. The first thing to do is to first to accept him as Lord and Savior. Remember, you accepting him is not because of what you have done, because of what you will do, or because of what you did. You are accepting because you are a descendant of Adam. And because you are a descendant of Adam, the Bible says that you are a sinner. And therefore, the glory that he intends for you is cut short. So if you accept him as Lord and Savior, you remove yourself from that lineage. And you now come into the lineage of Christ. Then you begin to read the word of God and then you pray. And then every day he will open up himself and reveal himself to you. The Holy Spirit will come and live in, in you and he will direct you as to what to do. If you are ready, 
to receive Jesus into your heart, then I entreat you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your saving power. I thank you for dying for my sins. Today, I give my life unto you. I ask that you come and leave my heart and you teach me the way to go. I thank you and I receive you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, my brother, my sister, you are born again. You are born again. You are no more in the kingdom of darkness, but you have been brought into the kingdom of his dear son, into the kingdom of light. Read your Bible always and pray. Look for a Bible-believing church near you and fellowship with them. The Holy Spirit will help you, guide you, direct you, and will open up new things onto you. If you are in a cry in case you don't have any Bible believing church around you and you want to fellowship, you know, with a very good Bible believing church, I'll invite you to Calvary Crystal Church International in Kwashiman, where the our Bishop, Bishop Emmanuel Denchia Nani, will help you, guide you, show you the way to go, and you come to know him more and more and more. Coming next week from Wednesday, we're going to start the convention in the church. You may want to come. You may want to come and experience the power of the Holy Spirit. The theme for the convention is focus on Jesus. And we have great men of God like Bishop Taki, our boy, coming. We have great men like Bishop Duncan Phillips coming all the way from Nigeria. And we have Reverend Yonato as well coming, a man I love so much with his word, coming. So please, if you can't, join us to church in Kwashiman. Come in next week from Wednesday. Come and receive food from heaven. If you happen to find yourself as well in England, in Kent, where I am at the moment, there are wonderful, two powerful Bible-believing churches that I know in Kent, and one is with my pastor, Pastor Matthew Abua, with GCC Grace Christian Center, a very powerful ministry, powerful. The Word of God is preached with every, I mean, with all the power, you know, and it's preached. It's, it's, it's like an experiential preaching, you know. He will lead you to the truth. Join us Sunday from 9:30. Dartford, there's another church that I've also experienced, I've been to, powerful church, preach the word of God in truth, it's called the Net Church in Dartford, the Net Church in Dartford, and it's led by Pastor Roy and Pastor Keeley, wonderful ministers of God, they preach the word like that. There are many great, 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 great churches, I have a friend in Texas, Pastor Martinson Osafo, he is a branch pastor for ICGC in Texas. Great man of God, he will help you with the truth. Great man of God in Nigeria, Pastor Phillips in Aja, wonderful man of God. Yeah, if you need any of these details, just send me a message and I'll give you the addresses because it's very important that you attend a Bible believing church, not any church but the Bible believing church. Follow me on YouTube, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and let's do this together. I'll be blessed and you'll be blessed and God will be glorified. And at this I say, Jesus is Lord. Have a blessed day. Amen.